Hey guys, so it's been a minute since I worked on this, uh, but that's probably not very evident from how I've been uploading the videos since I finished this video before I even uploaded parts one and two. Anyway, um, this is the MBC 30 flash cart, the crystal clear art on it, um, made from the Japanese Pokemon crystal carts, uh, I think finally in a position to finish this. Now, I got this workaround implemented last time. Uh, this allowed it to not crash. I don't remember exactly where we left off, um, but at least it was semi-working. Now, I believe this new revision should be perfectly working, but I'll need to go ahead and build up a cart. Now, I am just realizing that I don't have all the parts handy for this, so I am going to have to pause for a second, but I might as well try and fix up the few things that I need to fix up before I can move on to the next step anyway. So let me bend that pin back down. That should be good. I don't really care about all those shorts. We're going to remove this crystal oscillator. And, well, actually, I think that's about it. Everything else will do with my brand new hot air station. Now, I have 100% no idea what I'm doing with this new hot air station, so bear with me. This is going to be a learning experience for both of us. But I do have some new PCBs here. Rev 1.3.1 as opposed to 1.3. They fix those issues that I um, that we discussed last time, and uh, unfortunately, they still don't have the front white silk screen. But I think it's fine. It's not it's not worth the effort of uh, trying to get that taken care of. Uh, but I do want to point out one thing while I'm here: the quality of Osh Park's silk screen is just significantly better than JLC. On JLCs, you see all these like streaks in the silk screen. Wish Park is nice and smooth. I'm really digging it. Even uh, in this one, especially, you can see all those streaks. But anyway, that's besides the point. Let's get ready to get this thing done. I'm going to set this casing aside so I don't ruin it. And we will need flux for this. So I am just going to lather this stuff on there because we're going to need plenty of it. And this cart should already be flashed with something. I forgot what, but something. And this is just cheap paste flux that I picked up from my local electronics store. Can't say I recommend it, but it does work. All right, let's get desoldering. So I now have a proper hot air station and not, well, I mean, it's still just a cheap Chinese station, um, but better than my Harbor Freight heat gun. And I apologize if you can see that light flickering Unfortunately, that's just a uh, just a side effect of using this cheap station, I guess. Let me let it get up to temperature here. Now I have it set to um, 380, I think. Hopefully, that's plenty and not too hot, or I don't know, but. Go for it. See what happens.
Now I did play with this for a few minutes before I started the video. So I can't say this is my first time using a hot air station, but I mean, it might as well be. I'm gonna guess with how long this has taken that I'm doing something wrong though. Let's get some more air. See if that helps. Though maybe I need more heat, I'm not sure. Maybe both. Let's get more heat too. About 4.30. Yeah, I think that was the key. More heat. Probably go with less air, though. Turn that down. I don't think I really need to do anything else with this board. Or with hot air. Now, I know I could re-solder all this stuff with the hot air, but I'm not sure... I'm not sure I have the skill for that. I know, you know, let's try this one. Definitely gonna need some flux. We're gonna need some solder on that. Screw it, I'll just do it by hand. I don't even care. I like soldering by hand anyway. I'm gonna bring you in for a nice close up. Oh. I had it very nearly lined up. Oh, there we go. That's beautiful. So I am going to have to pause at some point to um, clean up all this flux. I'll probably end up soldering on this last component when I pause. Because i got to go find some, I think. Unless they're right there in that bag. I don't know, we'll find out in just a moment.
Okay. I only desoldered this so I don't lose it in case I need it at some point. I don't know what I would need it for, but it's the um, it's one of the gates on the original chip. Come on, you can focus. Maybe not. Or on the uh, original Pokemon cart. Great. Check this out. The flux has. Uh, oh, there it goes. That's what I hate about this flux. Okay. Which way is right way? I can't even see the text on this thing. There we go. That was right. It just keeps sticking down to the board with all the flux. Having a hard time getting it lined up. There we go. All right, this is a mess. Nothing but shorts, as far as the eye can see. And there's entirely too much solder on most of these joints. At least all the residual flux is making this easier. There's this one stubborn bridge.
beautiful, happy little solder joints. Except for that one short, again. FRAM shorts are always easy to clear so the pins are spread out enough. This chip is my least favorite. The pins are so thick and so close to each other. They just soak up so much solder. It's so difficult to clear bridges. careful around the, the leg that I bent up just in case that one's fatigued. Ooh, those are nice and sharp. That's a pleasant surprise. Those are uh, new flush cutters that came with my hot air station. I expected them to be complete garbage. But I figured I'd I'd give them a shot anyway. Alright. Last side. I think we're good. Yep. I don't see any shorts. I guess now we need to solder down. Now eh, we can do all these surface mount parts. Now, luckily, they're all in the same place, same order, same everything. So I could just desolder them like that. And that'll go there. But there's no solder on the pads. Oh, there it goes. Helps if I tin these.
knocking over my flux. Holy cow. Hmm. Alright, so I did lie. One of these components did change location. As it turns out, it was a, uh, it was in a bit of a silly spot. It was too close to where the front of the shell closes. It was causing issues with someone else who was building theirs. And for those who aren't quite following what I'm doing as far as transferring these components over, I'm hitting both. I have a I have a wedge tip on my iron. I'm hitting both pads at the same time from the side, and then just lifting it up with my tweezers. And usually, it behaves. This one didn't, but that's because that's a bigger resistor on a smaller pad. But with enough flux, the components will pretty much go where you want them to without much persuasion. Okay. So, oh, I forgot a component. And there's enough leftover flux from this first board that I'm not having to add any additional flux. Capillary reaction is a hell of a drug, man. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Let me see if I have that last component right here. Well, this is the right bag, so probably. Yep, there it is. So with this component, the little circle is in the lower right of the PCB, but with the chip itself, it's super hard to see. I really don't think my phone's going to focus on that. Uh, no, probably not. Maybe do that. Hey, what do you know? Okay, so it's super hard to see the text on this. You kind of see it from this angle, there's a YG, and then in the lower right hand corner, a very small dot. Or lower left hand corner, excuse me. Oh, there you go, now you can see it nicely. So, this goes like that on the board. The text faces up. And without this, the FRAM does not work. <clears throat> and the pinout for the FRAM is completely different compared to the original SRAM. So it's not like you could just transfer over the old save either. 
our old save memory. All right, there we go. I'm gonna pause for a bit and go get this cleaned up. I think we're good to go to test it out, but with all this flux everywhere, I'd rather, uh, rather get it cleaned up. Half the flux I used is no clean, but I still clean it anyway. The other half, the um, paste stuff, this needs to be cleaned up, so. There's still tons of that laying around here. That's what all the wetness you see is. The drier looking stuff is the no clean. But let me just do a quick inspection here. There might be a short on this. I'll have to look more closely after I clean it up. But everything else looks solid. Oh, I forgot the resistor and the um, oscillator. Now I have no idea what that resistor is so I'm just going to do it off camera. I never included it on this one. I know it's related to the clock signal and on the original board I didn't really care to test that. So yeah, I figured that I figured it either worked or it didn't and it probably worked but that wasn't the part we cared about. Okay. There we go. All right, now I'll be back. Hold my beer. All right, so after much careful deliberation and, you know, just reading the uh, bill of materials, I've discovered that R1 is indeed a 330K resistor, which I just bought a hundred of. Not for this in particular, but just because I happen to keep needing these stupid things and... Well, when you buy a hundred of them at a time, it's only like two bucks, so... All right. I got the PCB cleaned up. It looks like there is indeed a short on the flash chip, but we'll double check that just as soon as I get this installed. Okay. So yeah, I know, it's not pretty anymore. It's the one spot with flux on it now. Aside from the stuff seeping out from under the chip. There's really not much you can do about that without like an ultrasonic cleaner or something. But I'm not going to worry about it. Anyhow, multimeter. Let's check and see if these two pins are indeed shorted. And it appears that they are. So, let's fix that. So I can probably do this by just adding more flux and then going over this one more time. Nope, made it worse. Made it much, much worse. Because I forgot to clean my iron.
And yeah, I'm sorry. I know I've had the AC on this entire video, but it's like 40 degrees Celsius outside today, and I ain't about that life, man. Is that supposed to be shorted? It might be, because that's not coming undone. Oops. Yeah, it is. What do you know? Whoops. So that was fine. I could have not wasted my time. But here we are. Alright, so I'll need to clean this up one more time, and I do still need to add a batteria. But, I think we're good. Keep dropping things. Okay. Let's try it out, see how it works, yeah? Oh hey, that's a good sign. Crystal version, is this regular crystal version? Continue. <laughs> That's awkward. Let's try a new game. I'll be a boy. I'm not worried about the RTC because, again, with no battery, it's not going to work right anyway. Uh, I'll be, ah. Uh... that's a step in the right direction. I don't remember what the old, what it did when we had that wire bypass installed, because um, that video was like two months ago at this point. Um, but I remember initially it would crash the game entirely. So maybe, maybe we're good? Hey, there we go. It was just a corrupt save that time. Nice. Let's get a uh, let's get a battery in here. Let's test out our RTC as well. So with these style battery connectors, I've always had a few issues with the battery just not making good contact after it's soldered down. So I like to take a little bit of copper tape and see if I can't fix that. Now I think. You could probably get away with just like adding a dollop of solder there, but I don't like putting solder on gold contacts if it doesn't need to be there. Plus, solder doesn't, uh, solder will form a, a non conductive oxide layer with physical wear and tear, and uh, eventually it'll stop working entirely, and you'll have to pull the battery connector or the battery holder off and then. Redo the solder. Okay. So I'll take this and fold it to cover up some of the adhesive. And then I just pop it down right like that. And that adds enough thickness in the middle that usually we don't have to worry about it. I've got three battery holders left. But all I need is one. I like to tin these ahead of time. Usually makes my life easier.
these things, you know, get hot, so it's always nice. say you to a brand new battery. 2032, those are too big. Those will work, but let me use these ones. Ooh, that wasn't good. Let me use these ones just because the packaging takes up more room and I want to get them out of here. I suppose I could have just done that a long time ago. Or whenever the hell I bought these. I don't know. It's been a while. Oh, good lord. Packaging on these sucks, too. I spilled my tea. Son of a diddly. Sorry. Okay. So these go with the button down, positive up. Slide that in there. And I don't know where the screws are, but it doesn't matter because I still need to do a little bit of cleanup. But let's try it out. I think we'll have to reset the cart because I've had it unpowered long enough. Or at least reset the time. Oh no, just kidding. What did it say? It was like 10.09? I don't know why I'm saving again. That's not going to do anything. Let's, uh, let's take a minute, pop some screws in, and we'll check it again. Oh, I should totally clean it. I'll do it later. There's one. And... Oh shoot, I don't have two matching screws. <gasps> what a tragedy. Well, I do have two matching screws, just not two of these. If you've never paid attention to it, there are different types of game bit screws um, at least three that I know of there's like the green ones uh, the yellow ones and then just aftermarket ones solder ball stuck in there. Okay. Let's test it out. It was 10.09. It should be, what, like 10.11 now? Ta-da! It worked! Very nice. Alright. I'm gonna go clean this up, clean up my desk, get rid of all this trash, clean up my spilled tea. <laughs> And uh, yeah, thanks for watching guys. There we have it, a four megabyte. I suppose I should flash it with the four megabyte test ROM just to be sure, but hey, it worked before. I don't see why it wouldn't work now. But yeah, four megabyte, real-time clock, batteryless saving, and custom art to boot. It only took what, like six months and several tries? 
And, oh, I was worried about that. I, I thought I spotted a short looking from the outside, and I did. But it's supposed to be like that. All right, well, there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent night.